हेलो एवरीवन इन लास्ट वीडियो ऑफ पार्ट वन ऑफ हार्ट फेलियर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट पैथोफिजियोलॉजी ऑफ हार्ट फेलियर द मेन मेकेनिज्म बाय विच द हार्ट फेलियर डेवलप्स एंड द ड्रग्स इन विच वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट मेकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ कार्डियोग्लाइकोसाइड्स ओके सो इन टूडेज वीडियो वील लर्न अबाउट द रिमेनिंग ड्रग्स which are having positive inotropic effect and the drugs which are not having inotropic effect but useful in heart failure okay so i hope you have understood the mechanism of action of cardio glycosides now uh, we will learn how it acts on various organs right so first its action on heart so here you can see that this is the uh, graph which is plotted as a left ventricular filling pressure with stroke volume so here you can see uh, this is the normal curve right and this curve is according to frank starling law which says that as the filling pressure increases the stroke volume rises right so as the filling in left ventricular increases it will uh, synchronize with the rise in stroke volume but you can say it will be up to some fixed pressure up to 20 mm hg right so this is the normal curve now what happens in case of heart failure that due to increase in preload and increase in after load there is rise in left ventricular filling pressure gradually right so it is you can see up to 20 then up to 25 but as it is a heart failure it will not be able to give rise in stroke volume right so the curve will be flattened curve and the plateau will be seen here right when the pressure goes beyond 25 mm hg in the left ventricular the back pressure will be transmitted to the lungs and it will lead to pulmonary edema so these are the two curves this is the normal curve you can see and this is the curve in case of heart failure here you can see when the pressure is same yes the pressure is 15 in at the same pressure you can see the stroke volume of the normal heart is here while the stroke volume of the heart failed heart is here so when the heart is failed with the same pressure heart is not able to give rise uh, give normal cardiac output right so this is normal and this is heart failure now what happens when we give digitalis or digoxin it will increase force of contraction and that will give rise to the stroke volume right so it will normalize this y line it shows the normal cardiac output there is a minimum cardiac output that is required for proper efficiency so with the use of digoxin this curve can be shifted from this level to this level so it will compensate the cardiac output so this curve shows the effect of digoxin on this curve okay now what are the various cardiac effects of digoxin so first here you can see on the sa node it decrease the conduction by sa node by through by blocking sodium potassium atpase valve and by action on vagus nerve so by acting on this it will decrease the heart rate that is the first effect right now one more important thing here to know is that uh as you know that digitalis increases force of contraction so by uh, logic increasing force of contraction also requires more oxygen right so in case of cardiac heart failure when the heart is already struggling for oxygen you are increasing force of cont contraction that may, that should increase more oxygen demand and that should uh make heart more make heart more trouble right but it will not happen in case of digitalis because along with increasing force of contraction it causes bradycardia right it decreases heart rate 
so simultaneously oxygen demand of heart also will decrease right so there will not be a trouble for the heart as far as oxygen level is concerned <coughs> okay now in case of <coughs> av note and parkinson's fiber it will decrease conduction velocity right it will uh, it will increase the refractory period by decreasing conduction through uh, av node and his parkinson fiber so it will increase refractory period of this part as far as atria is concerned at the lower doses at the small doses it increase the conduction velocity and decrease refractive refractory period and at the higher doses it will increase automaticity that will result in some kind some types of arrhythmia like pulses by jimenez or some uh, extra systole right that is the reason here it is decreasing uh, conduction here it is increasing conduction and that may give rise to tachycardia also right so these are the effects on the heart now this effects will be reflected in ecg right this is the normal ecg now what happened in case of digitalis due to as it is increasing this uh, decreasing conduction velocity here so it will increase pr interval as well as it will decrease qt interval right so it increase pr interval and it will cause decrease in qt interval because it is causing uh, shorter ventricular systole and here it is delaying av conduction so it will increase pr interval and there may be slight st depression also so it will give rise to this type of configuration hockistic configuration so these are the effects on the heart uh effects on other organs in case of blood vessels it decrease peripheral vascular resistance and decrease venous tone but no effect on blood pressure uh, in case of uh, renal effect uh, as the blood flow is increasing peripheral vascular resistance is decreasing it will cause increase in renal diuresis right uh, so as the renal perfusion is increased it will cause diuresis and decrease in compensatory uh, sympathetic discharges git anorexia diarrhea can occur cns disorientation hallucination can occur but these are the at the higher toxic doses otherwise <coughs> blood vessels and kidney effects are significant okay <coughs> sorry coming to the uses of digitalis congestive heart failure it is a drug of choice actually you can say it is a controversial use but still it is the drug of choice for low output cardiac failure remember in the high output you cannot use it because it is increasing cardiac output so in case of low out low output uh, uh, congestive heart failure you can give digitalis it will increase cardiac output as well as it will increase urinary output it will increase renal perfusion we have seen all the effects okay now these are the types of arrhythmias where this digitalis are used you will learn this in in detail in uh, in the chapter of arrhythmia but for your information psvt is paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia af is atrial fibrillation and this is sorry it is atrial flutter and this is atrial fibrillation in psvt uh, it is supraventricular tachycardia so there will be here there will be a chain of reentry and it will cause tachycardia over here in atrial uh, flutter there is 200 to 300 heart beats per minute per minute and in fibrillation it is 500 is the rate so in all these types it will be useful as it decreases heart rate here uh, also it will be useful as it decreases the heart rate so it is used in arrhythmia we are not going into the detailed of uh, this okay then in dilated heart to to any other conditions uh, this drug can be used right so these are the uses uh going before going further the uses use of digitalis in heart failure is still controversial why because it has some cardiac side effects right so 
before using it you have to consider that side effects that side effects are first thing as it is causing bradycardia it can cause complete heart block second thing uh, as we have seen that it is causing extra systol bisimenes and other types of arrhythmias also so one thing you should keep in mind that it is used in arrhythmia some types of arrhythmia as well as it is also causing some types of arrhythmia right so that is uh, you can say a type of controversial thing that drug is used for arrhythmia and it is also causing arrhythmia as a side effect right so uh, from the same kind of case uh, which uh, I have published in the journal where uh, digoxin induced arrhythmia how you can uh, uh, you can how you can differentiate uh, uh, the link of that article uh, I have provided in the description you can go through that art article that is a very uh, interesting case of our hospital only where a person was admitted uh, due to arrhythmia and he was on the digoxin right okay other here you have to also think about potassium level because uh, digitalis is causing and decreasing intracellular potassium level that can also lead to arrhythmia so if ions are low potassium ions are low you have to give supplements of potassium and other treatment we have to give according to the arrhythmia treatment right and one more important thing is that you can also go for digoxin level serum in digoxin level if it is more then you can give digibind fab frag uh, fragments right it is known as digibind fab fragments which are the antibody for uh, antidote for this digoxin higher digoxin level extra cardiac effects side effects uh, can be there like nausea vomiting headache blurring of vision this kind of side effects can be there you cannot give digitalis in if hypokalemia is there as it is decreasing potassium level you cannot give to the children you cannot give to the elderly patient right so and if the heart is already having arrhythmia you cannot give digitalis so keep in mind all this side effects okay second group in case of drugs with inotropic effect right these are still the drugs which are having positive inotropic effect phosphodiesterase inhibitors now this phosphodiesterase inhibitors the mechanism of action if you see imrinone milrinone are the drugs which are having this uh, used for chf they in the inhibits this phosphodiesterase enzyme that will lead to increase amount of cyclic amp and that will cause increase force of contraction of the heart right and it will also cause some amount of vasodilatation also so that will be helpful in case of chf so these drugs are used in case of low cardiac output but they have limited uh, applications now apart from heart failure uh, one more th important thing for you is that various types of phosphodiesterase inhibitors uh, you should remember all this because uh, this all you will come across this all in various chapters of the book right but in the exams of mcqs or competitive exams this type of questions are asked right so this will be helpful to you uh, uh, non selective inhibitors are xanthine alkaloids which are used in case of bronchial asthma they are 3 and 4 inhibitors uh, Vinposatin PD-1 inhibitor used in the uh, cognitive function of brain. Anagrelide used for thrombocytosis. Emrinol, milrinol, we have seen. Phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor used in CHF. Uh, Rolipram is not used. Drotaverin is used as an antispasmodic PD-4 inhibitor. Phi inhibitor, sildenafil, verdenafil, they are used in impotency in case of for causing penile erection. Right? Uh, Diperidamol and Zepranast, they are very less used. PD-6 inhibitor, quinazolin having multiple actions, antibacterial, antimicrobial property, that is anti-inflammatory property, PD-7 inhibitors. PD-10, papaverin is also used for, for penile erection. So, keep in mind all these various types of inhibitors 
for competitive exams. Okay, now third group of drug used for uh, having which are having inotropic effect as beta one beta agonist. You have already learned this drug, so we'll consider only the real uh, its effect related to CHF. So for that, if you remember the effect of this drug dobutamine and dopamine on receptor you will be able to justify its role in chf right dobutamine is having selective beta 1 action and weak alpha action so with the help of this selective beta 1 action it will increase the force of contraction it is why it is having more inotropic effect so where it is used for the short term means emergency management of heart failure you can give uh, dobutamine. So, differentiate you can here differentiate with the digital digitalis that it will increase oxygen demand. Why? Because it, it is increasing force of contraction, but it is not causing bradycardia. So, dobutamine will increase myocardial demand, oxygen demand, and that may precipitate MI or angina like. So, that is the differentiation from digitalis effect. Dopamine. It is also having the major effect on DOPA receptors, right? D1 receptors, which are situated in the kidney. So, it will increase the renal blood flow and it will cause diuresis, which is helpful in case of heart failure. Then, it will be having beta 1 effect at the higher doses, which will increase force of contraction. And at very high dose, it will cause alpha receptor. So, it will cause vasoconstriction, but it will at the very higher doses. So, at these two dose level where it is acting on dopa and weak beta 1 action it will be helpful in case of chf right and especially it will be helpful when the heart failure patient is also having some uh, renal dysfunction right so these are the beta agonist okay so that was all about drugs which are useful in chf with inotropic effect now the drugs which are not having inotropic effect means they are useful but they do not increase force of contraction of the heart uh, almost all the drugs you have learnt diuretics you have learnt ac inhibitors you have learnt beta 1 antagonists you have learnt vasodilators are considered in angina and that part ischemic part vasopressin receptor antagonist we'll see right so we'll discuss we'll not go in details of each group but we'll uh, see their role in CHF, right? So, first diuretics, all these effect you will be able to uh, learn their uh, effect if you understand this figure properly, right? So, first diuretics, you all know loop diuretics, thiazide diuretics, potassium uh, sparing diuretics, right? So, loop diuretics are useful in this case where you can see in the pathophysiology there is sodium and water retention and that is causing edema so when you will give diuresis it will relieve this edema so it will have acute effect and in the acute case of heart failure you can you must give diuretic to give immediate relief to the patient right now if you give loop diuretic along with uh, causing diuresis it will also cause loss of potassium right and that may lead to arrhythmia because it's already already heart failure is there and you are causing hypokalemia that can give rise to arrhythmia so to spare this effect you have you can give a combination with potassium sparing diuretics right so you can give loop diuretic with spironolactone which will which will spare potassium and prevent arrhythmia apart from that spironolactone is also having aldosterone antagonist effect right and it is uh, uh, proved that aldosterone receptors are also present on the cardiac myocyte so it will be helpful at that terms also right thiazide diuretics they are not uh, much used in case of chf right okay next is ac inhibitors ac inhibitors if you see these steps AC inhibitors as well as angiotensin receptor antagonists both are used. So, it will act at this step renin angiotensin system, it will block the enzyme, the conversion AC inhibitors and ARB antagonists, it will block 
this step right so by blocking this step they will decrease preload and afterload and ultimately they will inhibit the effect that is cardiac remodeling that is the ultimate fatal thing that uh, that is leading to ventricular dilatation right so it will block all this effect and uh, the patient will have the you can say uh, apart from giving relief it will have <coughs> long term benefit also by preventing cardiac modeling so ac inhibitors and arbs are amongst the first choice in the patient of chf right second thing you can also give it in combination with the uh, spironolactone because spironolactone is again it is having aldosterone antagonist effect right so if you give alone ac inhibitors and arbs ultimately aldosterone escape will be there and ald rise in aldosterone level will be there that can be prevented by spironolactone okay the third group is beta antagonist right beta blockers we have already learned uh, in uh, ans so beta blockers where they are useful here you can see in the pathophysiology due to impact increase sympathetic discharge there is beta 1 activation and vasoconstriction this can be prevented by having beta blocker effect but logically if you think beta blocker causes bradycardia and it can be they are contraindicated they should be contraindicated but by acting at this step it has beneficial effect and especially they have long term beneficial effect so they are given uh, long term in the patient of chf especially useful is the carbidolol which is having beta 1 beta 2 and alpha 1 effect along with that it is also having free radical scavenging effect also right all the beta blockers cannot be used okay the third group is vasodilators they will act by at this step here the vasoconstriction is causing increase in preload and afterload so if you give vasodilator by having vasodilatation effect they will decrease preload and afterload and it will have improving effect in cardiac output so various vasodilators you can use nitroglycerin is the venous dilator hydrolyzin is the arterial dilator and nitroprusside is having both the effect so depending upon the condition you can use one more here is nesritide it is a recombinant form of uh, beta natriuretic peptide that is secreted by the ventricle itself and it is having effect in on uh, vascular smooth muscle it is causing dilatation of vascular smooth muscles and it is a recombinant uh, bnp right so it will be also useful in case of chf okay and the last group is uh, vasopressin receptor antagonist so they antagonized vasopressin effect now what is vasopressin it is antidiuretic hormone right and <coughs> sorry it is secreted uh, at the stimulation by the stimulation of uh, decrease in cardiac filling they get secreted right and with the having effect on this vasopressin x on v1 and v2 receptor right so by having acted upon that they can have effect on either diuresis or in case of vasoconstriction so convibtan it is having v1 plus v2 antagonist effect right so uh, and tolvibtan is having v2 antagonist effect right so all ultimate thing is that it is causing two combination effect one is anti diuretic effect of vasopressin is blocked so they will cause diuresis which will help in relieving edema and second is it will cause it will block vasoconstriction effect of vasopressin so leading to vasodilatation but they are very rarely used okay so this all we have seen two groups of drugs drugs without inotropic effects their mechanism of action and drugs with vasotropic uh, with inotropic effect which are more important these are usually used for acute effect and these are usually used for maintenance effect with without inotropic effect right so that is all about the group uh, groups used in this now this figure shows overall management of heart failure and it is 
uh, from uh, the book Goodman and Gilman. It will show the overall program how <coughs> you should manage a case of heart failure. So you can divide it into the four stages. Stage A is high risk with no symptoms. This patient is having various risks like hypertension, diabetes and all that but no symptoms. So you have to just go for risk factor reduction and patient and family education and treat the associate condition. At second stage, patient will have structural heart disease but no symptoms means the heart disease is there which you can uh, identify with the, some signs or by ECG or like that but no symptoms. Here you can start AC inhibitors as I told you it is the first choice because it will prevent cardiac remodeling. So you can start AC inhibitors with beta blockers in selected patients right. Then if patient is at the stage C where having structural disease with previous or current symptoms then AC inhibitors beta blockers are still there but you can give diuretics, you can give digoxin with sodium resection. Now as the patient severity of symptoms increase you can go on increasing your uh, intervention right you can go for cardiac resynchronization revascularization right multi specialty team aldosterone antagonist so these are the stages if the condition of patient worsens otherwise this two steps will suffice right giving this drugs with the digoxin and diuretics and if patient become critical then you have to go for inotropes, VADs, uh, ventilator assisted uh, treatment and hospice is nothing but life support is known as hospice treatment right. So these are the stages of treatment you have to consider in case of congestive heart failure. So that includes the whole uh, thing about congestive heart failure. It's, uh, pathophysiology and drugs with and without inotropic effect and overall manager, management of cardiac uh, congestive heart failure. Hope you have learned something from this uh, assessment of both parts 1 and 2 uh, will be uploaded uh, very soon separately. Thank you.